Hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Alina, if you're new here, and I make videos around anything and everything that I can think about. And today we're going to be talking language learning. As a lifelong language learner, I've been amazed by the mixing of languages and the way that this works. So let me just explain myself a little bit. When did this perspective of mine start? It started when I moved from Italy to Sweden. And by that point, I was 13, speaking five languages already, and I never had anyone to talk to in real life and have a conversation with on a daily basis, except texting my friends every once in a while. After a while of learning Swedish and speaking Swedish, I was at a uh, international grocery store with my dad, and we saw a few people speaking Italian. So I was really excited, and we met and talked a bit, and I realized that my Italian wasn't really there at least not the way that I left it. So I was mixing the words up and sometimes filling in the Swedish words to my Italian or while trying to speak Swedish after that, I was mixing in Italian words. Very confusing, right? Because I never mixed Swedish and English up. I never mixed Swedish and Turkish up. Why was I mixing these two languages specifically? Because again, I spoke Italian to a mother tongue level and I had absolutely no issues speaking it beforehand. And I was like, what is happening? Like, am I stupid? Am I forgetting Italian? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I still understood everything. I could still make a conversation. I was just having difficulty keeping these two languages separate for some reason. So after a while of thinking and thinking and thinking, I realized that I learned Swedish, as I like to call it, on top of Italian. What does this mean? It means that while I was learning Swedish, I never went back to Italian. I never read anything in Italian or anything. So I was thinking, is it because I didn't let my Italian marinate enough? Did I not learn Italian well enough? But then I realized I never mixed French and Swedish up and I know much less French than Italian. So what is this issue here? So the issue wasn't to be using these two languages together. It was the lack of it. Here's the catch. While I was learning Swedish, I had English as my rescue language. So if I didn't remember anything in Swedish, or if I wanted to ask something that I didn't know how to ask in Swedish, I would ask it in English. And also with uh, my friends, I spoke English. So I was in an environment where both of these languages were really prominent. And this is the same thing at home with Turkish and Swedish. Both of the languages are really prominent, and I'm generally using both of them pretty much in a matter of seconds. And I realized that despite English being my fourth language, I was never mixing these two up. Until I find a better term, I will call this the used unused principle. This is much different than code switching. It is not the same thing as code switching, and I've never seen anyone talk about this in this way specifically. Code switching is generally for people in bilingual households where, depending on the moment, depending on the people you're with, you are going to speak in different languages or maybe um, mix those languages up. That is not the same thing as what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here specifically is the involuntary and confusing way of mixing languages. You feel like you don't have the capacity to speak that language because you're mixing them up so much. So the general principle here is that you need to use your target languages together to learn them in the best way possible. Your brain doesn't really work like a dictionary, at least as far as I know. And what your brain specifically needs is that you call this thing a phone and it needs a way to describe words and objects and stuff. So I feel like when you're learning uh, two languages without using them together, your brain just kind of uses them as one. So if I do not remember how to say phone in Italian, I'll just say mobile in Swedish. So use them together. So let's get into how you will actually use this principle in your language learning. I designed myself this exercise where I do a general speaking exercise for like half an hour on a specific topic. And the difference here is that you will switch your language every minute or two. If it is a shorter topic or exercise, you can do this with sentences as well. So you will be switching language every single sentence. It is one of the most efficient ways you can learn a language. So let me give you a very quick example on how you can do this. Let us pick the topic of introducing myself. Very easy. And since this is a quick example, I'll just do it pretty much every sentence. Hey, you heter Alina och jag bor i en liten by som heter Tanja i Sverige. Ritornerò a Italia a settembre per studiare ingegneria biomedica e medicina. Sì, tutte e due insieme, non so come devo fare. Hobbilerum arasında edebiyat, kesinlikle, gördüğünüz gibi, içerik üretimi ve dil öğrenmek var. Tabii ki yemek yapıp yemeği de çok çok seviyorum, bayılıyorum. Um, my favorite language to speak 
is and probably will be English because I've lived with it for so long. All my media that I consume and create is in English. So it's very dear to me as a language. Um, so this is a very, very quick example. So if you want to do this in a written format, my favorite way of doing this is writing a middle school essay. So for example, I'll pick a historical figure or an artist and I'll try to write their biography in three or two different languages, for example, Spanish and French together. And what this does is that you will be consuming different kinds of content. And again, trying not to use your native language, you'll be searching for information about this person in your target languages. And so after you've garnered the information, you will write your own essay. And I feel like, again, using different languages, you will be even better at using the grammar and the flow of the language. And again, neuroplasticity, get used to using these languages together pretty much instantly. So you can make the switch much and much easier for yourself. And of course, you will be in this way learning all these languages at the same time, but also definitely increasing your code switching ability. Again, I do not like using Google Translate and all that stuff when it comes to this using your native language, but instead searching up the meaning of specific words in your target language. So for example, searching in English, if you're learning English, saying something like, um, what does revision mean or revision definition or something to get an idea of what the word means. And again, last resort, you use your native language. And a quick tip here is that if you are on different levels in each of your languages, it's going to be much better at least in my opinion. And why is that? That is because you can fall back on your more advanced target languages when you're trying to learn another one. I noticed this in myself where, let's say I'm trying to speak in language A1, I will fall back on the second weakest language. And it's very interesting, but it really works for me. And again, I'm both going to use the more advanced language while also learning the weakest language. And you can incorporate this in your actual learning by maybe translating between your target languages because maybe you know something in French but you don't know it in Spanish or vice versa. So you will again be learning more and more in all of your languages and actually taking a step forward in all of your languages. I really hope that this exercise helps you as much as it did me. I really feel like I took not one, not two, not even five steps forward. I feel like it was a hundred steps forward at once because now I know how the brain works even better because again I've tried to search it in so many ways and I could not for the love of god find any kind of resource on this thing specifically the only thing that I found was code switching and again this is not code switching that I'm talking about code switching is a little bit more easier on the brain however this one is just the complete opposite your brain will feel weird and squiggly and pretty much smooth when you're trying to do this at first again that's how i felt when i was trying to learn swedish and just as i was like yes i finally learned swedish i can uh keep up a conversation i realized that um my brain felt so smooth trying to talk in italian and i thought i was like i thought i knew italian but that's not how it works again like um your languages are in one of those shells and the thing here again is to use them together if you have any questions about this topic specifically please let me know i will be glad to help and also let me know which languages you're planning to learn or wanting to learn and maybe you can meet people who are willing to learn the same thing accountability really helps especially with friends and you can even make friends to talk to and learn different languages maybe you can even share your native language so that you can help people who are willing to learn your language also if you have any requests or suggestions for videos or any questions specifically that you want me to address in a video also again please let me know down in the comments and i will see you in the next one